Well, thank you so much for coming. We are very happy to provide a preview of our system's first statewide open educational resources repository. My name is Bo Young, Policy Associate of eLearning and Open Education at the Washington State Board. I'm joined by two of my colleagues today. Monique Blair is the designer of this hub and Michelle Brennan is from OER Commons and she will provide us with a training on how to properly submit resources to the hub. So our goal today is to provide you with a preview of Open Washington Hub. We'll show the general structure and we'll walk you through the basics of using the hub. And this meeting is being recorded and live captioned and we are offering the link for the live captioning. So please see the chat window. So after the meeting, we'll send out the recording link and the user manual that will give you the summary of today's presentation. So what is Open Washington Hub? It is a dedicated OER repository for you. You probably wondered why we are building Open Washington Hub when we have Open Washington website. Our Open Washington website, openwa.org, is our comprehensive information home that hosts all of the existing resources and tools to support faculty use of OER and this Open Washington Hub is a repository, um, one of the affiliated services hosted by Open Washington. So this hub does not replace Open Washington, but supported by Open Washington. So what are some of the benefits of using Open Washington Hub? This hub space is provided by OER Commons, which is one of the biggest OER database in the world. So when you submit resources to this hub, it is automatically added to the OER Commons database and your resource will be searchable through OER Commons by anyone in the world. So that means by sharing your work through Open Washington Hub, you are contributing to a much larger community, which is what OER is all about. Um, next, it will effectively promote your work and possibly your career. Adding your work to this hub it will significantly increase the visibility of your work. Your work will be easily shared out and distributed in and outside the Washington system. And Open Washington works as a repository and referatory. You can directly author and store your work into the hub, or you can simply provide hyperlinks to the awesome resource that you found on the web. And this hub offers very user-friendly and integrated authoring tools. I will say almost painless and you will love it. And lastly, it does allow you to make some mistakes. As soon as you start creating a resource, it is automatically saved in the draft folder of my items. And you can take your time revising your work until you are ready to publish your, publish your work. And you can also have your unpublished resources submitted to your group and that resource will be visible only to the group members until your group decides to publish it. So now that we had a chance to talk about what it is and what it can do for you, Monique will give you information about how to actually get started. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone for your patience here. Anyone can contribute <laughs> to the Washington State Community and Technical College System. So that could mean if you are a faculty member or administrator or staff, as we have list, listed here, and you have individual content pieces um, that you'd like to contribute, you can contribute to the site. But it's also available if, there, if you have projects that are larger or you're, or you're a consortium or a counselor, and you have a council, and you have um, grant work that you're doing and you would like a place to store your to store your content you can do that here at open washington in in that case what we'd ask it is that you contact us directly and we'll help set you up with a place to do that and boyan will say a little bit more about that as we get moving along here and what resources can be con could submitted this is almost like anyone in the system it's almost like any resource you can think of right now so a full textbook a full course packages your course syllabus, assessments, readings, audios, pretty much anything you can think of can be 
can be submitted here. It's a really fantastic, robust um, repository that we have with OER Commons. What I'm going to do is just show a, a little um, tour of the Open Washington Hub, the main page, and then really quick just show briefly how simple it is to um, set up an account. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm going <laughs> to, across the top here we've got, um, we've got, basic, this is basic navigation here. So there's a little about Open Washington Hub. We've got working groups on this page, system projects, tutorials, and then additional OER resources. What I want to point out, because I think this is kind of cool, is this little search box right here, too, is a search that is specifically for our hub specifically. And so if you wanted to do a more ro robust search of, for open content in general in OER Commons, then you would go to OER Commons page and then search there. But here you can search for resources that are, that are unique to our project. Here we've got a little overview of of the hub, how to contribute to the community if you show up on the page and you haven't been here before. We've got working groups that are broken down by field of study. Bo Young is going to talk a little bit more later about the dis difference between the working groups here. So as you can see, we've got, we tried, we worked to get everything that would cover everything in our system that might show up here. And we've also got system projects here. So for us, that would be, we've got open course library resources listed here, some faculty learning community things, our open policy video series. Also, we wanted to make this easy when you're in here. So right here are some tutorials. So this is going to give you a little bit. I'm going to tab here so you can see. So this is on search and save content. You're going to click here on these other navigation. You're going to get how to create and submit content. So a little bit about open author, how to import Google Docs, and create open textbooks. A lot of this is it going to point you to other places in OER Commons. Um, resources. And then down here are additional OER resources. So if you're on this page and you want to, you meant to go or you want to go check out Open Washington, you haven't yet. So here's a link to Open Washington and then also a link to our Open Attribution Builder. And if you haven't checked this out, this is a, the Open Attribution Builder. It's a really fantastic tool for citing open works. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top of the page real quick um, just to show you that, so for, if you are interested in contributing any sort of content or work to our repository, the first thing you're going to need to do is create an account. So up here in the top right-hand corner is the Sign-in Register tab. So it's really super simple, which is great. Um, basically, you're going to um, add your email username and then um, Wait, here we go, register, right here. So you don't have an account, so you're going to click register down here. It's going to collect a little bit of information. Let me get here. Moving. There we go. So first name, last name, email. You're going to create a password, and then you're, when you register, you're going to get sent a confirmation email that is going to have you confirm in order to activate your account. So once your account is activated, then you can end up back over here in our hub. And then Bo Young will talk about how you can become a part of a working group and then also contribute, we'll cover how to contribute content as well today. So that is my piece. I'm going to pass this off to Bo Young to offer some distinction between working groups and system projects. Thank you, Monique. Monique just showed you two main categories for resources, working groups and system projects. And I would like to just touch on those two spaces one more time, a little more specifically. Working groups is basically a faculty oriented space. If you have an OER to share as a faculty member, working groups would be best for you. We are hoping that it will be a space where faculty members feel easy sharing the resources, having conversation and possibly working on a project together. And about system projects, Washington SPCTC has open licensing policy that requires all resources produced through SPCTC sponsored grants to be released under a Creative Commons attribution license and publicly shared. So we are hoping that system projects will be a home for the deliverables of those grant projects such as Open Course Library, FLC, and High School 21. But even if you are not a grantee, 
if your college, group, or council has a special project and a set of products to share under an open license, please let us know. We'll be happy to host them in Open Washington Hub and assist you in creating a collection for your project outcomes. So, uh, next slide, please. And I think, I think Sarah had a question about how this differs from the Open Course Library. Oh, Open Course Library was a project that produced 81 course, open course packages for our systems, high enrollment courses. And Open Course Library is just a home that houses those 81 course packages. So it is just one of our project deliverables website. Um, this Open Washington Hub is a bigger system-wide repository that could house the deliverables like uh, open course library course packages. So back then, if we had Open Washington Hub, we wouldn't have created separate website for open course library course packages. Now that we know where those resources would go, how do we contribute our resources to this hub? Step one would be confirming that your resource is actually an OER. If you're a copyright holder of the work, Please check if your work contains any resources that are copyrighted with all rights reserved. They might need to be removed from your work before opening licensing it. If you're not a copyright holder but found an awesome OER and wish to share, please double check if the resource is either openly licensed or in the public domain. If it is difficult to identify the terms of use, please contact an OER step at your campus or email us. We'll be, we'll be happy to check the copyright status of your resource. Uh, to learn more about what qualifies as OER, please see Learn OER tab in the Open Washington website. Assuming that Assuming that you're an individual faculty member and has a resource to share, the second step would be joining a working group. A joining a working group takes literally a couple of seconds, so we created a little video to show the steps. Go to Open Washington Hub and sign in. Under the working groups, find a group that matches the subject of your resource. We will choose Open Math and click join this group and you will be immediately accepted and you will see a contribute to this group option. And to see if I have been added, click members. And I see that I've been at it. And a couple of things that we would like to emphasize. One, um, under shared resources, you will notice that there are pre-created subunits under each discipline group. We created we created those based on Washington's Common Course numbering system, but if they do not make sense or if your group likes to suggest different structure, just let us know. Two, if you do not see your discipline group here, please let us know again. Uh, we'll see what we can do and then we'll probably be able to create one for you. And step three would be actually submitting the content and Michelle will take over and give us a short training. Michelle, take over. Great, thank you, Bo-Young. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So can everyone see my screen? Bo-Young, maybe you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, great, thank you. So I'm going to pick, off, pick up right where um, Bo Young um, stopped. So I am in a group on the Open Washington Hub. I am in the Open Washington English group. Um, and I'm signed in with my test account. Um, and I have added myself uh, to this Open Washington group. I'm already a member. I see the contribute to this group 
uh, drop down menu here, and I'm going to show you um, how to create an open author resource. Um, so we're going to click the drop down, and you'll see a few different options here. First, we're going to focus on resource builder. So you're going to click resource builder. Uh, and this will open up a WYSIWYG editor that you can use to build your resource. So before I start building my resource, I'm going to back up a moment and I'm going to show you an example of what a finished resource will look like. So when I was chatting with Bo Young um, recently, she showed me an example of an uh, authored resource that had been create that she had created and added to the hub. So our example resource for today is going to be contemporary world problems, environmental science and English. So this is a standard format that Bo Young um, and Monique um, created uh, for submitting a Canvas course um, and describing it inside of OpenAuthor. So you can see they have the title, um, summary description, um, some definitions of the course outcome, and then here we have external links to the Open Canvas course, the Google Docs version, and the Common Cartridge file. So I'm going to show you really quick um, how to first create your own resource, and then we're going to come back to this example resource. I'm going to show you how to remix it. So it's pretty simple WYSIWYG editor, just like you've used before. I'm going to give it a title, um, and then I'm going to show you briefly just how to use some basic formatting. So once you've typed your text, you can actually just use the drop down to do your formatting. And we're going to use this as a paragraph. I'm also going to go over um, really quickly some um, the insert media workflow, because a lot of folks uh, find this one a little bit confusing. So in order to insert any kind of media, so embed a video or add a downloadable file like a PowerPoint or, or a doc, you're going to click this little paper clip that says insert media. Uh, from here, you can grab a video from, for example, Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, you can grab an image from the web. You can also um, grab a link to, for example, a PDF and put it in here. So right now I'm going to show you how to upload a video file and embed it. So I'm going to click Find File. That's going to open up um, my computer. So then I already created this open Washington um, video that I'm going to embed. So I'm going to open it. Um, and the embed process, if it's a big video, it can take a while um, to upload. So while we're waiting for this one, um, I'm going to go back to contemporary word, word problem uh, example resource, and I'm going to show you really quickly how to remix this. So um, I did not author this, Bo Young authored it, but I am logged in, and you will always need to be logged in to remix a resource. So I'm simply going to click the remix this resource button. And then this gives me the ability to, so it automatically created a copy for me. You don't need to worry about editing someone else's work. This is already a copy. So maybe I decide that it's a really good idea to make a template. So I'm going to say,
and I'm going to, it has a spell checker, which is nice because I'm constantly misspelling things when I type. Okay, so everything is auto-saved as I create it. So as you can see, it says the changes were saved. So now I have remixed this re resource. I'm going to go to my item. And I see that I have my English Canvas course template draft available here. So let's go back to the video. I am in my previous resource. Uh, I'm just going to give it a title. And then if the video is big, you'll see a, a, a little uh, information here that says the video is being processed. This can take several minutes. Um, so you'll often want to um, come back to your video after it's, it's finished processing. So I've created my test activity. And if you'll recall, I submitted my test activity directly to my group. So now this is saved as a draft. So if I go back to um, my items, if I then go to my groups, and I open my Open Washington English group again, I'll see that my test activity is saved as a draft inside of the group. So this is important for uh, folks to remember that when you go to a group and you contribute directly to the group with an, either of these tools, your draft will be available to all logged in group members. They won't be able to edit your draft, but they'll be able to see your draft. Uh, so that is a basic overview um, of submitting uh, resources using the open author tool um, to a group. Uh, maybe one last thing I'll add is that you can unshare your resource to your group after you've shared it. You simply select the resource and delete it. So this will only remove the resource that you've created from your group. Um, it will not delete it from the platform. Um, so if I delete it from this group, I can simply, when I'm ready, go back to my items, and I can share it back to my group. and you'll see it's reappeared. So um, I want to briefly touch on the other authoring tools available. Um, we also have something called a lesson builder, and you can get a little bit of information about each of these by hovering over the information, the I here. Um, so as you can see, this is for K-12. Uh, so it may not be relevant to most folks uh, uh, in attendance here. Um, the module builder is created is helping to create um, modules uh, that can be built uh, into full courses or just be standalone modules for um, higher education, which would probably be the tool um, that would be relevant to this project. Um, and I can click into it really quickly to uh, give you an overview of the UI. So what is um, special about the module builder is that it actually creates student views. So for example, you can have an overview of the course here or the module here. Um, and then you can have some instructions for instructors who may be facilitating um, 
this module and then you can have separate student content meant specifically for the student. And I will show you what a finished module looks like. So these modules are from a particular author uh, participating in our OpenStax community and she's created a number of modules for Psychology 101. So as you can see here, it's a much more structured format. Um, and you can see she has learning objectives. Um, she's got um, an overview and then she has teacher instructions. And in this gray box here, you see everything that's meant directly for the student. So these have a student view, which you can see here. If you copy paste this URL, you'll go directly to the student view. So you might want to share that in your LMS. So here's what a module looks like in student view. Um, and you may have one or more tasks in your module and it's really nice because the student can um, go through it um, step by step uh, without distraction. So I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to pause here for questions. I think I saw something come in on the chat. Uh, is there a list of all the media formats that are supported for different media files? Um, so um, most video formats are supported. So we actually use, right now we use Kaltura. Uh, so when you upload videos, uh, we actually are sending them to Kaltura to be um, converted from whatever format you um, upload them in um, to web viewable. So you don't really need to worry too much about your video format. Um, and any other file format um, that you submit um, can always be included as a downloadable doc. Um, you don't need to worry too much about um, the file format there. Even if it's unknown, we'll just stick it in an S3 bucket and then provide a link to it. Um, so, so you really don't need to worry too much about non-allowable files. The only issue might be is if the file is too big, it might take too long to upload. Um, great. So does anyone have any other questions? Bo Young, is there anything else that you would like me to cover? I think you really covered um, uh, really important parts of the authoring tools and thank you very much. Um, do you, do, does anyone else have any questions for her? Okay. Um, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Peter Wallace, uh, University of Washington. I saw just in uh, the demo um, a space for tags. Could you talk a little bit about the metadata associated either with uh, specific lesson um, activities or overall resources? Sure. Let me, I think I can go back in and share my screen. Um, and we'll go into the describe step. Okay, so you should see my um, course template. So I'm going to go into describe and you can see this is a resource that I remixed. So I'm using this because it already has really good metadata that Bo Young added. Um, and so all of the required fields are going to be um, marked with an asterisk. So your abstract, uh, your general subjects, uh, language, and material type, as well as keywords are all required. Um, and I would really highly strongly recommend either education level or grade. So 
with most folks here, it's probably going to be education level. Uh, and so you would just select from the list of available uh, selections for most of these. The only, so you'll see the drop down on pretty much every field. Um, we also offer like some autofill keyword um, help to sort of guide you. So for example, um, if I start typing English, um, this will give you a list of some of the um, keywords that we have in our system that we're already using. Um, so this will just help you add keywords that are going to be a little bit um, more efficient for including your resources in some of our existing collections with existing queries. Um, and it is the same uh, required fields, I believe, for For the module builder, you'll see the same thing. The layout's a little bit different, um, but it's more or less the same. So um, we also add metadata for licensing, so it'll allow you to um, answer some yes/no questions. It's, this is a way to assist people in understanding um, what the licenses mean. So if I click, if I click yes, I, I will allow modifications. And no, I do not want it to be used for commercial uses. It will select the Creative Commons license appropriate for me. So you can click on that link, and it'll show you exactly what that license means. Um, one thing that I always tell people when we talk about selecting your license. Once you publish your resource publicly to the library, you will be unable to change your license. And that is because legally, once you provide a resource with a specific license, um, you are actually unable to revoke that license. So make sure before you click that publish button that you, you've selected the license that you really want to use. The same thing goes for um, the resource builder. We have the same questions here. As long as my resource is still in draft mode and I haven't clicked that publish button, I can change my license. And again, I can check it out, see what it says. So you could go through all of the different permutations if you wanted to, just to see what all of the available licenses are. So, so thank you for that question. That was a really great question. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Are there prompts for submitters to self-assess whether the content is accessible? So right now, uh, we do not have that particular feature, although we do have it on our roadmap. So uh, we use a WYSIWYG editor software called CK Editor, and they actually do have a accessi accessibility checker plugin that goes through uh, your resource step-by-step step and gives you suggestions about where you can make it more accessible. So we are hoping to integrate that into our tool um, by next year. So um, we could definitely follow up on the timeline for that. Let's see. Okay, it says, I may have missed this. Is there a preview for an entire Canvas course where is the best course of action to download the cartridge and install it? Great question. So let's go back to um, let's go back to the hub. So I'm going to click my I'm going to click hub my hub open Washington, and I'm going to go back into the collection, 
High School 21 Plus. And I'm going to go back into my example resource. And um, I'm going to click on the Open Canvas course link. So this is a publicly accessible link. So it will take you directly to Canvas um, to show you the publicly accessible course there. And let's see, a question from Greg. Um, let's see, so what is the level of editorial control? Um, are there going to be specific folks who manage specific work groups or systems or SBCTC staff that oversees the entire site or otherwise? So I'm going to, I, I can tell you what kind of editorial control there is on OER Commons generally, and then I'll pass it back to Bo Young and Monique um, to talk a little bit about the SBCTC specific workflow. So on OER Commons, um, we have digital librarian staff that monitor our resources for broken links, um, as well as um, other issues that may make a resource um, out of date. So for example, with science resources, because the field moves so quickly, we're often deaccessioning resources when they're no longer correct or relevant. Um, so there's that level of editorial control. Um, we do also often find that people sometimes accidentally publish their resources um, in Open Author or Module Builder when they're not quite ready. So instead of um, saving it as a draft, they'll move it all the way through publish. Uh, and we do have digital librarian staff that review the authored queue. And you may get an email that says an admin has moved it back to draft for you because it looked like you published it when it wasn't really meant to be published. Um, so they'll also do that for resources that look like they're test resources. Uh, they'll move it back to draft. Um, and now I'm going to hand it back to Monique um, and Bo Young to answer the other half of that question. That's a really good question, actually. So we plan to oversee the entire site for now and checking each submission. Um, quickly glancing the terms of use and nature of the content does not take much time. But um, as our number of submissions grow, hopefully they will, <laughs> we might need a different structure for monitoring those submissions. Uh, for example, the subcommittee for each discipline group might emerge. So um, this is something that we will have to observe and see and discuss with the system to figure out the best way to do a natural uh, quality assurance uh, process. Great, so I don't hear any other questions on the authoring. Um, so I can touch really quickly on the help articles included in this slide deck. So um, we created, so I'm assuming the slide deck is going to be distributed. So you all will have access um, to these help links. And I will one more time share my screen so I can show you how to get to the OER Commons Help Center uh, from any page on OER Commons. So um, anytime you need to get to the Help Center, you can click on your icon um, that shows up when you're logged in here, and you can click on Help Center, and that will take you to the uh, OER Commons Help Center home. Uh, where you can search for specific, if you have a specific issue or question, um, and you can also browse uh, for specific content here. So, for example, if you had a question about authoring, create content, you could come here and it would show you all of our help articles. 
Um, and when you're finished, you can just go back to OER Commons and it'll take you right back to the page where you were at. Um, if you aren't logged in, uh, you can always use this little help widget, which is going to be on the bottom right hand side of every page. And then you can ask a specific question. So I just type in the word submit and I hit enter. Um, and that gives me all of the Health Center articles. Um, that apply. And if you don't find an answer to your question, you can always click the contact us button uh, and that'll submit a help ticket to OER Commons. Um, you can also email info at oercommons.org uh, directly to submit a question or a help ticket. And that is all I have. Uh, so I will pass the baton back to um, so you must be very excited and can't wait to explore. But if you ever feel stuck at any point, simply let us know. We are hoping that all Washington colleges will nurture and develop this space together. And if there are things that do not make sense, let us know. We are inviting all of you to review, test, and provide feedback, which is the reason that we call this a preview. We want this space to stay as a living space, constantly evolving into a better direction. So thank you again for coming. Uh, we'll follow up with a recording and user manual. Thanks.